There are so many great lures and presentations out there in the bass fishing world. Well, this week we're going to go over one that kind of gets forgotten about. Hi there. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Before we get into the video, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, punch the notification bell. If you like the video, like, drop a comment, go ahead and share it. All that engagement helps us here on the channel. This week, we're going to be talking about a lure that often gets forgotten, and that is the venerable spinnerbait. With all the different choices out there today, this lure sometimes gets put in the back box of the boat or falls to the bottom of our tackle box and we forget about it because there's so many new and exciting things out there to use. But the spinnerbait has been a mainstay in the bass fishing world for decades. Why? Because it works. So we're going to go ahead and go over some of the basics today and we've got an overcast day We've got a little bit of wind and we're going to see if we can pull up a few on this old bladed wonder The particular model that I'm going to use today is actually a combination between a willow leaf and a Colorado blade and because it's overcast I'm going with the gold blade and I also have a trailer or a stinger hook on here and if you notice I have this hook so it moves freely in other words I slip the stinger hook over the shank of the main bait first and then I put the little rubber keeper on or the surgical tubing uh, sometimes I see people where they put that um, surgical tubing over the eye of the stinger and it holds out straight you'll have a better hookup ratio and also get hung up less if you keep it where that stinger hook can go ahead and flow freely and move around on the back of the bait well today we're going to be following the wind Whenever we get into the fall of the year, a spinner bait is a good choice because like we've talked about in earlier videos, it mimics bait fish and that is what bass are starting to key in on. And the other thing that we've talked about in previous videos is that as we get into that fall transition, it can be tough to locate those fish sometimes. They will start to follow this bait fish. They will scatter around. They're not always in the most predictable uh, of places. So that is why I'm fishing a wind blown bank. Now I'm back in a little bit of a cove now, so let's go ahead and move out of this cove. A wind blown bank puts the fish into a more predictable position. It gets that whole food chain relocated. So the wind will push uh, the, the minnows or the small bait fish shad and uh, microplanktons, that type of stuff, will push them up onto the windblown bank. And then the smaller fish will go ahead and get up there and start to feed. And of course, when the small fish start to feed, then the big fish will get up there as well. So a windblown bank with a spinner bait is a one-two combination that oftentimes yields to success. Um, now we've all been in situations where that wind is just horrid and you know we want to find a, a calm cove or a place that's you know not getting beat up with the wind so particularly bad but if you can go ahead and fish those windblown banks, even on the worst days, if, you, if your boat's got the trolling motor to handle it, or if you're bank fishing and you can go ahead and position yourself on the bank that the wind is really hammering, your odds of success are going to go way, way up, definitely. Um, now, as you can probably see here, we don't have a ton of wind but we do have some wind. Uh, if I got to the other side of the shoreline, it's completely uh, slack water, and that's not the best spinnerbait situation to get in. We want to make sure that we've got some sort of chop on the water, some sort of ripple, and you'll just have much, much, much more success. Um, I have also found that I have better success with a spinnerbait when it's a little bit more overcast or cloudy like it is today. I mean, you can still catch them on those bright and sunny days by throwing these spinner baits up into, you know, tight cover or working them through some uh, weed beds and things like that, especially smallmouth. They will uh, go crazy on a spinner bait on those sunny days if you burn them. But I personally have more success 
on cloudy days with a spinner bait. Now as far as my equipment setup, I like to use a little bit shorter rod. Uh, many manufacturers and uh, this Lose one has a six foot 10 spinner bait rod. And the reason I like a little bit shorter rod is because I'm going to be oftentimes uh, fishing it uh, up close to cover. But also, if you've noticed my cast, and this is the main reason, is with a spinner bait, I'm pretty much always roll casting that thing underhand. And with a little bit shorter rod, your rod tip is less likely to hit the surface of the water there. So a six foot 10, um, I'm using a mock crush here, which is a little bit higher speed ratio, gear ratio. Uh, but if I was to pick my ideal ratio for a spinner bait, it would probably be that six two, six three. I like to fish it a little bit slower. Now, one of the things um, that you will hear anglers talk about with a spinner bait when they come through, especially vegetation, I'm working some um, small pockets of vegetation here. Some anglers will talk about ripping that spinner bait through that vegetation. And others will talk about just putting pressure down with the reel and kind of pulling or cranking that spinner bait through that vegetation. I've had success both ways. Um, I have found that by cranking down on the reel when I'm stuck in vegetation, that bait will jump or hop through those weeds. And I have a little bit more success keeping that bait clean than if I try to rip it through. Sometimes the bait will turn sideways and then I'll get some weeds and stuff hung up on there. But you'll just have to figure out for yourself which particular retrieve that you like better. Now, for those of you that are new to spinner baits we have so many people in our uh, facebook group that consider themselves novice beginning or even intermediate level anglers and you probably are wondering about the blade situation i mentioned earlier the long skinny blades are considered willow leaves this short uh, tear dropped one it's uh, not quite round just slightly tear dropped as a colorado blade and then you actually have what's called an indiana blade as well which is somewhere in between the two uh, the willow blades are more known for flash now even though it's a cloudy day it's going to flash more than a colorado blade uh, and the Colorados are known more for vibration. So traditionally, rule of thumb, if you have clearer water, you're more likely to fish the willows. If you've got a little bit of stain or darker water, you're going to be fishing with those Colorado blades. And this particular spinner bait has got both on here. Um, I fish a lot of clear water in the northern part of the country. And so therefore I do fish a lot of double willows as well. And even on a day like this, this particular lake that I'm fishing has got some long fingers to it, some long channels. And if I can get in places where that wind is going down the length of that channel, the better off I'll be as far as positioning fish. But I'm fishing right now the boat, as you can probably see if I get it turned right here, I'm not that far from the shoreline but I'm sitting in, it's fluctuating anywhere from 18 to 20 feet of water. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those bass that so are hanging out in those shallows, but have access to deeper water quickly. I'm a big, big fan of accessing that deep water quickly. So that's why I'm targeting this particular shoreline. And as you can see, I'm just giving slow casts the bait I'm using is actually a 3 8 ounce. If I don't get anything here up on the surface, I could always put on a half and try to go a little bit deeper. Um, another technique that you will hear about often is slow rolling a spinner bait. And that is where you just reel that spinner bait as slow as you possibly can, yet still maintain revolutions with the blades. So keep the blades spinning but go as slow as you can and slow rolling a spinner bait is a nice technique to use when you're trying to cover deep weed beds, uh, get down on some ledges, those types of things when you want to get a little bit deeper. So a slow roll.
and like any lure out there. Um, you know, the manufacturers have got a bazillion different colors. And once again, you know, go with, you know, clear water, your more natural colors. Um, and with darker water, more solid colors, your black, blues, those types of things. Now, with that said, smallmouth tend to have a, a liking towards chartreuse. So if you're in some really heavy smallmouth waters, uh, for some reason that chartreuse seems to get them all fired up. So that's a good choice. Now a spinner bait is an excellent bait to throw through some pretty thick and nasty cover. So if you come into some lay down trees or some brush piles, don't be afraid to throw this thing in there. Bang it into the wood, uh, go ahead and pop it over a limb. It does a really good job of coming through cover. I hope that today's video about spinner baits will one, maybe give you some tips that you hadn't heard before, give you some confidence to go ahead and dig this thing back out of the bottom of that tackle box or out of that compartment in your boat and make sure that this fall that you give this bait a chance. It is an excellent bait to find fish, to search for fish and to catch them when you've got uh, days like this and you've got some windy conditions, overcast. It's a good one to put fish in a boat, something that you don't want to forget about with all these new techniques and presentations and lures coming out onto the marketplace. The spinner bait still catches fish. Don't forget to make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know what a difference you're going to make in their life. And for the bass fishing life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.